There's no theme to any of this. Things find me and I find things and I like them. I make and I repair neon signs, so I'm always fixing stuff. I'm a sucker for industrial design of the past. I like the fact that other people have owned it and touched it and lived with it and been part of it. If I could have an old airplane in here, I would, right? What do I drive is whatever is running at that particular moment. I have lots of choices. Generally, they're broken. Today we are driving a 1941 Tatra T87. One of the most influential cars ever made. And certainly if you consider the numbers of them that were made, the representation on such a small production car is pretty phenomenal. A guy named Paul Jarre was a Hungarian industrial designer who worked with Zeppelins. So all this streamlined car stuff comes from him. He was the first one, I think, to put car bodies in a wind tunnel. So he is the first one to come up with the kind of teardrop shape of a car. Tatra were the only car company to actually pay him royalties for his concepts and designs. This car is Volkswagen, Citroën, Hudson, Nash, Tucker. It's a rear engine, air-cooled, overhead cam V8. It has three headlights, dorsal fin, one of the lowest drag coefficients of any car ever built. When this car was built, cars still looked like a loaf of bread with wheels. I saw a, a picture of one in a book about military vehicles when I was in my teens, and I just thought it was the most fabulous 1930s weird aerodynamic streamliner I've ever seen and decided that one day I'd have one, and I actually have four. Tatra's a very low production car, never sold in the United States, so there just weren't very many. And at that time, you couldn't easily get something out of the Eastern Bloc, and I was too young anyway. In 1993, I found two T600s in Eagle Rock that had been sitting in a garage for 15, 20 years. Soon after that, I found this car, and soon after that, I got a T603. If you're used to driving a new car, it's kind of a buckboard. If you're used to driving an old car, it's unbelievable. Like a 90s Toyota with a little bit more of a sports car handling. It drives like a new car. It doesn't drive like a 40s car or a 30s car. I mean, I've driven lots and lots of 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s cars, and this thing does not feel like an old car. Got really tight steering. You can spin it around. It's got a lot of punch because it's a V8 and it doesn't weigh anything. The engine is basically a small aircraft engine, air-cooled. Only thing that I would ever consider to be vintage feeling on this car is the front axle. Even though it's independently sprung front axle, it's a typical European double spring. So they're independent, but they're very stiff. So you feel the bumps. The car was not designed for heavy traffic. I don't know what cars are. One of the problems you'll find with this car is that because the fuel is directed over the engine on a hot day, you can get vapor lock real bad. When it's parked, everybody thinks it's the most fantastic thing they've ever seen. When it's driving, nobody looks at it. It's like the Aborigines and an airplane. They don't know what it is, so they don't see it. And it's really weird because you'll be driving this thing on the road and people cut you off all the time. It's like the car's not there. When I found this car, it was pretty much a total wreck. The floor was rotted out. The whole back end of it was disassembled. The seats were out of it. The steering wheel smashed up. All the gauges were broken. The glass was broken. It was rusty through and through. No wheels, no bumpers. It was a mess. This car was a little bit beyond what I could do myself. Restoring the car to me was very important. It was almost like my contribution to the world. So in order to do it, I had to 
find a shop in Czech Republic that could do it, which is what happened. I did the initial work on it. They did the paint, the bodywork, the upholstery. As they were doing the restoration, if they couldn't find something, I'd find it or I'd make it and give it to them. Essentially, I was funneling them finished parts, which they would then assemble on the car. I just wound up going to Czech Republic a lot and really enjoying it. I like weird stuff. I'm in this place. Let's see what kind of weird stuff this place has. And then I find out that not only do they have weird stuff, but they have kind of weirder stuff than anybody. This is the Hanzelki und Zygmunda board game. Hanzelki and Zygmunt were Czech journalists who drove from Europe all the way down Africa. It does come with instructions. And it comes with little bitty Tatras. You know, the Czechs did a lot of stuff like that. They just designed this really weird stuff. My philosophy on everything is I don't want things I restore to look like I restored them because that to me is not a restoration. And when I restore a car or a motorcycle, I'll leave a couple of parts unplated. The best award I ever got was at a motorcycle show, I won best original motorcycle for a bike that I restored. Best on restored, and I thought that's fabulous. If I could do that with everything, win best on restored, I'd be very happy. I don't wanna sell stuff. I can't imagine what it would take to get me out from under that thing. I love the car, and that's something I can't replace. Because it's, for me, it's not about the money. The heart and soul I put into something like this, what's that worth? When I kick the bucket, I don't care. Someone else can have it. I won't make any money off of it, but that's not what it's about.